Hello everyone, in this update, we're gonna be talking about Tropical Storm Mindy forming in the Gulf of Mexico, as well as a dangerous severe weather threat coming up for the Northeast tonight, as well as a secondary tropical system entering the Western Gulf by early next week. So if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Uh, this is a special afternoon update because we have in fact now Tropical Storm Mindy did actually form in the Gulf of Mexico. It is a minimal storm, but it has been officially named the 13th named storm of the season. It's moving northeast at uh, 21 miles an hour. It's expected to make landfall later tonight near Apalachicola with uh, several multi-inch rains are gonna be impacting uh, that area. That is expected to traverse across uh, the panhandle of Florida and get back out into the Atlantic off the Carolina coast where it's supposed to remain a tropical depression but not officially a storm as this would continue uh, shifting out into the open waters. So let's get right to it and let's look at the setup of what we have to work with. There is the system we've been talking about for several days now that has in fact come to fruition. We've got a lot of instability under the Gulf along with the daytime heating. That is pushing the heavier rain uh, well inland now and will be later on tonight along with this cold front here. So all this is gonna be coming together to set the stage for a tropical storm impact as well as a severe weather threat along the East Coast and especially the Northeast with some very heavy rain. So that's what I'm also deeply concerned about. But we have a secondary system that's coming out as a tropical wave now. It doesn't look like much, but again, it's gonna be another one of those systems that's gonna continue lifting off into the West Northwest going to be into the Gulf of Mexico by late this weekend. And a lot of indications have this possibly developing into another tropical system, either uh, Nicholas or Odette, depending on what this tropical wave, if it forms before this one does. But it definitely looks like we've got more tropical systems uh, coming into play just within the next uh, week. So let's kind of get into this. What we were concerned about, we talked about this actually way back in august 31 and back then we had what they call the mjo which is your matt and julie oscillation going into phase four but we made a special update and said hey it's actually going to back up so when it backed up it continued to remain in a favorable phase and i've got this highlighted here so it's an easy chart to follow so whenever a tropical system is in a hurricane season in phase eight one, two, or three, those are your more active, enhanced, positive type phases, a more a little bit more activity for tropical storm development. Once they get into phase four, five, six, and seven, that is less likely uh, to be in a tropical storm environment. So right now it continues in this green shaded area from the 8th through the 22nd, remain in phase, active phase three, and it's not expected to go into phase four until about another week, till around the 16th, 17th time frame. So that leaves the door open for that secondary wave that goes into the into the Gulf to be a lot more likely to form into a tropical system because a lot of the dynamics are coming together and saying, hey, it's a lot more likely for that to happen. And I do feel that is gonna be the case. So let's move forward and, and what's my concern about tonight is here's the latest update from the storm prediction center as that boundary as that cold front will continue to push it off in the southeast it's going to hit all that instability now with the daytime heating and we're going to have some big thunderstorms firing up into the northeast so places like philly into baltimore into dc uh, into virginia here going into new york city all the way down to charlotte into boston this whole area into virginia beach is going to be under the gun we're seeing some of those strong to severe thunderstorms first it's going to be initial wind event and possibly tornado event and then it's going to transition into a squall line a nasty squall line not just in the early evening hours, but this is gonna be a nighttime event for many areas. So it's gonna be one of those things that you're gonna to have to leave your weather radios on. So dangerous flash flooding is under the un, on the table, as well as uh, quick spin-ups of tornadoes. 
and then we got some hail with it and also that wind threat as well but the dangerous flash flooding is going to be a a, a, day, a a huge concern as we go into the overnight hours because it's going to hit at night a lot of you guys are going to be sleeping and you're not going to know what's coming uh, out there so and the, the ground is just extremely saturated in, in those areas so definitely i'm getting concerned with this particular setup uh later on this evening but like i mentioned under the gun we have a five percent chance of seeing tornadoes and you just went through that event about a week ago but a lot of these same areas will be susceptible to seeing another uh, active night for tornadoes uh possibly with a two and five percent swath anywhere from philly to baltimore and uh into new uh, new jersey here so this whole area will be under the gun with those isolated spin-ups are possible as we get into the early evening hours and peak time unfortunately looks to be about 10 11 12 1 2 o'clock in the morning you know so this is an overnight event uh for these areas but like i mentioned another concern is the very heavy rain we do have a slight risk for excessive rainfall now remember these areas can only handle a half inch to an inch in a one hour time span so anything more than that within an hour time span you can't handle it it's the the drainage systems everything's set up in these areas it's just very difficult uh for uh you know any any type of water that forms any higher than that is going to be very difficult to drain properly so that's why when we're looking at the potential of seeing possibly up to two inch uh per hour rainfall rates at times now it's not going to be you know so that's definitely of concern uh as we get down here into where where mindy's going to be making landfall as well as that, that tropical that storm is going to be con uh, combining together in the northeast so let me show you some of these uh let me lay out the radar uh, for the next uh, several hours so here's here's the layout for tonight so this is the three z's so this is about 10 o'clock so as about 10 o'clock we're going to be seeing so those isolated supercells all the way down here into the southeast going up into west virginia getting in portions of uh, eastern pa going into going into jersey get into eastern parts of uh, new york here into vermont going all the way up into maine as this continues pushing off into the southeast this is like one two three o'clock in the morning so this is definitely an overnight event in new york city and uh, and of uh, you know philadelphia and new jersey and this is these at these totals could be adding up so some pretty significant amounts so let me let me show you some of these amounts according to the latest uh, hrrr model and this is just over the last next 18 hours so this is definitely my concern with so many reds popping up and that's reds implying anywhere from four to six inches of rainfall just in the next 18 hours so if you get under these some of these training rain bands yes you could easily pick up two to four inches in an environment that can only handle a half inch or a one inch an hour rate uh, rainfall rate so that is the uh, concern as these move across. Now, this looks to be a, a line going to be moving across, but if we get multiple lines moving through, if we get one inch per hour rainfall and then it's not, and then another one, one inch per hour, then another one inch per hour, yeah, easily some of these places could be getting up to two to four inches with isolated amounts of six inches. Now, I'm not looking like anything of, of extreme like we saw like a week ago. But definitely, definitely concerned, especially with the saturated soil in these areas of heavy convective rain banding setting up later on this evening into the overnight hours. So it's definitely one of those things you want to be able to sleep with, you know, your weather radio on and alive and alert and be looking out for, especially in that time frame, say between 10 o'clock tonight and three o'clock in the morning. So for those five hours, those are, those are going to be some crucial hours to be really kind of sleeping with one eye open and making sure things don't get out of hand in your area and come up quick fast so definitely be on the lookout uh for that so as we move forward there's that tropical wave so like i mentioned we're going to continue to be an active phase three so i do feel this now eps guidance has a pretty favorable guidance again of another tropical system coming back into the western gulf by the time we get into that day three day four time frame we're talking you know right around late late this weekend as we get into early next week we could be looking at a formidable tropical wave you know going back into the western gulf 
And in fact, the latest global guidance is already implying that. They're, by week two, they already put out, say, hey, there's a moderate risk for a tropical storm development in the Western Gulf. So that they already highlighted that feature. They already has, has that on radar and say, hey, things are starting to come together. Say we could be looking at a tropical system going to be impacting the Western Gulf. Now, this is going to be a completely different setup than what uh, Mindy has to offer. And I'll show you the, wh the reasons why. Here's the setup on the ensemble members of the latest uh, GFS model. Yes, implying that we have more members populating right along the Western Gulf in these regions. Now, this looks to be, again, another one of those slow developments, but it's going to have a lot of deep tropical moisture with it because we're going to have what they call a Kelvin wave coming across. We had one of those with Ida. We had one of those with uh, Larry. We actually have another one. All that basically means is in layman's terms is we have some deep tropical moisture. So we have a lot more work, moisture to, be, to work with on top of active phase three, phase three. So with those two combinations, that is not a good combination as it looks like things are gonna be coming together and form possibly into a tropical entity, but also have a very heavy rainmaker along with it. So let's take a look at the uh, EPS ensemble members. I showed you the EPS probability guidance, but again, it favoring right along the coast here of the Texas and the Louisiana coast. By the time, yes, we get into that, you know, late weekend into early next week, uh, time frame. In fact, the latest uh, client prediction center has already highlighted between that 13th and 15th time frame, heavy rain, torrential heavy rain moving in a good swath of real estate all along the Texas border, along the coastlines here, all the way into Louisiana here. So this could, looks to be possibly a widespread event of a potential multi-day heavy rain setup so that we could be picking up some big totals after all this is said and done. Now, the reason being some of these models based on the precipital water index with the combination of that Kelvin wave, we start seeing those deep purples showing up and that's indicative of that extremely heavy rainfall. And these areas can handle a lot more rain than what they can in the Northeast. But still, when you're having a model already showing two and a half inches, yeah, some of these rainfall rates down in near the coastline could easily go up to four to five inch uh, uh, rainfall rates at times. And these really juiced up convective, uh, you know, tropical entities. And that's my that's my concern. I don't think I don't think the models are actually picking up on the true intensity of maybe some of this double digit rainfall that could come to fruition. Uh, they are seeing a little bit of that, but I do feel a lot of this is going to be a lot more widespread by the time it actually comes comes you know closer. So what the time frame I'm looking at is around Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Looking about a, maybe a four day event from say the 12th through, through that like the 13th time, uh, 15th time frame. So next Wednesday, we could be looking up some dangerous totals along the coast with some, some very severe flooding, maybe double digit type flooding along the Texas border and even the Louisiana border. So it's a lot of times you can see the guidance, a lot of times they've hinted towards Mexico and Texas. And as the system gets closer, it shifts a little bit further off to the east. So definitely don't let your guard down into Louisiana and even into Mississippi with this particular system, because this is gonna be a slow moving event. And I think everything's gonna come together for a really active period uh, for that 12th through 15th time frame on that secondary system after Mindy comes uh, through tonight and the and the severe weather threat along the along the eastern seaboard later on this night. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.